G'day everyone, so today I'm going to wire up this multi uh, three, got the top on the wine tap here, three quad extension lead, which used to be an extension lead, but not anymore. So yeah, show you how to wire this up to a pressure cutout switch, which I'm going to set up for this tank. Fill those compressors, so they will fill up and they will cut off like a pop of air compressor will. So I'll show you how to properly wire these things up. No, this is an older um, Italian brand switch contactor, but it's missing the cable holders. It's supposed to have these sorts of things that screw up in there, but it's supposed to be slightly smaller and they can to seek and taper and bite the cord, but I can't seem to find them. Anyway, yeah, I'll show you how to wire these contacts up and how to strip this cord while we're done. I'll show you. Yeah, that's the box of my AV sound sound just ever looking at there. Go about that far down. Bend it over your thumb. In this case here's where I've already started, so I cut through there. Very carefully, just run it along. But don't cut the um any of the conductor insulation uh, don't cut any of the um or don't try not to nick any of the any insulation. Cause that'll make it unsafe. That's unacceptable. You just do that very carefully. See as I'm stretching it, I have to barely touch it with a knife and it cuts. So like that. You can see there, I'm barely touching it and it just cuts really easily. Should be able to pull that a little bit more there. Done. Easy. Not even a mark on them. But yeah. That's how you do it now. Get your right size cable strippers. I think it's a okay. You can see it on the on the gauge which size it is for the inner conductor, so that would be about on this particular model, which is a cheap Trojan Bunnings pair. It's a 14, and this should strip without, here we go, didn't even touch the conductors, so yeah. You just say you can strip the cable safely and without um, making it unsafe, this is a, by the book. Something like that, you can go a bit, probably about to there. Back to where my nail is, but depending on what you're wiring, but if you're wiring a plug top or, or a socket, the instructions on the packet tell you how to do that, how far it's going to be. But yeah, I'll probably show that in another video one day. There you go. You twist those strands of wire, twist them. Insert it through here, and I'll show you how to roll it up through here. So I'll do that off camera. Okay, the oil's well done. Push the plastic uh, clamp on, then the grommet. And that grommet fits inside here when it's closes inside a um, taper. It bites on, and that just shrinks around the cord and forms a watertight seal. That's not quite the right thing, but it does fit in there, so I could screw them in. Hopefully, they'll stay. And I'll be done proper. There'll be a proper secure connection to provide mechanical strength. Then that is. So that was also sort of dusty. Out. So yeah, I've got to change that. There's a, I've got to find another way to fix that. That part. This half goes to the um, side of the like the side connection. So it relieves a pump when the pump stops um, pumping. So your pump goes in through there. That of the tank pushes a little lid up. Allows the tank to fill up, and when the tank gets to the right pressure, to whatever this and that switch is rated for, that'll pop down, and now we'll just um, pump with us the momentum left in the pump. We're going to push the air head, relieve the head pressure through here, and we'll come out through here somewhere. There's like a little outlet that relieves head pressure. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. But yeah, there's a low side and a high side, cut in, cut out. So yeah. I'll wire this up, and yeah, and I'll show you how I do it. Do that off camera. I put the cord to here and I just show you how to terminate it. 
as I was saying, you got active, neutral, and earth is a, obviously the ground of this frame. Okay, viewers, hopefully the camera can see that. What I'll do is I'll slide this cord. Oops, there you go, slide down the cord. This slides underneath this plate here. So I've got to undo this more before I don't get the right screwdriver. Pain in the ass because you can hold up the one end, the one edge with your finger, wedge it up, and push the conductor underneath that. Yeah, push it underneath there. Before I'm gonna wind these up properly. Okay, the other way. Push all the way under. Hold up with your nail. By the insulation and push in as you're doing it to keep it from coming out. You can't see my hands in the way, but yeah, what I've done, I push in with my nail into the terminal block as I'm doing it up so it doesn't come out. Nice and tight. It's a good mechanical connection. Then we're going to make a way for the neutral. Have a little play around with this and I'll show you when I finished. Okay, well, that's a finished product. It's all screwed in, it's all sealed up. Got our earth connection, neutral, and active on our contactors. So, yeah, this must be a cut out. I think this must cut out. This must be the cut inside. Low pressure side, drops down. So like nothing, there's no pressure on it, so the contacts are closed as it builds up. Yeah. This is different to most, um, this particular brand or whatever it is, is different to most of what I've worked on, so this will be the first time I've actually wired it up and now I've got to connect it up to our valve. So i got to figure out which one's which on this one, because not all of these are the same. So yeah, basically, pump side, the side we use, like you have a screw a little connector on there with a, one of these JMAT connectors and the main shut off, shut the whole, this whole thing will be shut off by this tap here. Only problem is, condensate in the tank. If I unscrew that, tip it upside down and flush water out like that way, that would be the best way to do it. <coughs> if I had some good um, annual uh, kill rust primer, about five or so litres, I could have filled a tank up to, up to about here with a primer and just flushed it and flushed it and flushed it and moved it all the way in and poured it out and let it dry and that would have coated the tank with some, with some um, metal protected but by the time the tank rusts away, it'd be years and years and years and years and years so <clears throat> probably don't even have to, have, need to do that <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, that's the plumbing half of it done and there's supposed to be a little washer like that Underneath sits on top of here. I wash it, it sits there. Then this cap goes on, and that allows this button or kill switch button to work properly. So you're gonna find a washer for that, put it back together. It should be done for now. I gotta figure out a wire through here, and either I'll use those compressors or again, not, a, not, a, not this motor, but a proper induction motor to, to hook up through here. To find one somewhere. Hopefully, I can. Yeah, blow that through. Get myself a nice old, um, good working order pump unit That's for that tank. So, yeah, in the meantime, I'll just use them there. So, yeah, I'll probably have a plug to a socket or something hooked to here. Come to a little a socket that they can plug into. So, yeah. So anyway, I'll dig around for a little washer for this. Uh, and this is all sorts of good useful bits and pieces in here. Mm, that'll probably do, but too big. I'll do this off camera, it might take me a while. Okay, we also just been looking around on this. We've got a negative, drops of pressure, I think that's a cut in and cut out. 
so negative or the other way drops cut in and cut out pressure but turning it up positive this way which is uh, I believe it's clockwise increases the cut in and cut out pressure so we're wiring it up looking down from the top those wires have to be pretty neatly packed away to label, enable the cover to go on got myself a washer I've got to try and sit on top of that which allows um, that cover to be screwed on without it being crushed in because it's yeah got to allow for that which if it's screwed down too tight without a washer without that washer that switch doesn't work what that switch does just holds it yeah push off by pushing it down I will hold the contact open and that's it you can press it switched off so yeah that's what it does so yeah I'll put the cover on and I'll show you what it looks like finished okay if it was all done off on now I think the pump goes in there and this has to bolt on as a pump goes into the charge it this has to come off another pipe somewhere so if that goes on another connection I make I make another connection somewhere whether it be here or here or somewhere in between here that will have another manifold coming off there and that will screw on so the full pressure of the tank is always on this inlet which pushes the diaphragm up to here which controls it so yeah if you met it somewhere here or here if I can find a suitable um, manifold and that just pushes in there like that just snaps in that's it it's a full connection there it can't go straight in there put a manifold between there and there it might still work so we're getting out a T piece for there there and in there with the pump will go there alongside it there'll be a T that comes off I think it'll, it'll still work the same way if not well back to the drawing board anyway not hard to figure out but yeah it's coming along quite nicely so thanks for watching